my name is Richard Kirby, I'm the Royal Society University Research Fellow at the University of Plymouth. We're showing the world of marine plankton. Um, a world of life that rarely gets attention. It's very small, it's difficult to film, but it forms a major component of the Earth's ecosystem. It creates 50% of the oxygen in the air that we breathe, the smell of the seaside. Um, England's newest national park is made of the remains of dead phytoplankton, the plant-like plankton. And of course, when you drive your car, you fill the tank with the dead remains of planktonic organisms that sank to the seabed over tens of millions of years. This is the larva of the netted dogwood, a snail you can find in rock pools on the seashore. To come Once they've seen the film, which is in a 360 panorama film, we have um, microscopes that people can look at um, live plankton. We brought in some tropical species. Um, we brought in some algae, some phytoplankton from Africa, and um, we have a continuous plankton recorder. We also have around the, the periphery of the exhibit, we have the equipment that scientists use to sample the plankton. We often forget that most organisms, most life on Earth, is cold-blooded, poikilothermic, and reacts to the environmental temperature in which it finds itself. And as Air temperatures rise uh, due to current climate change and rising levels of carbon dioxide. The temperature of the sea surface is rising, which is where the plankton live. And so they're shifting in their distributions and abundance, tracking changes in temperature. For example, if you were to look at the seas just off our coast in the northeast Atlantic, if you separate the copepods, the, the first step in the food chain from the phytoplankton to other planktonic organisms, the grazers, the herbivores, you would find that that dividing line between the warm water and cold water species has moved northwards by over 1,200 kilometres over the last 50 years as the northeast Atlantic has warmed. And of course, as they change in abundance, as they underpin the marine food chain, the organisms that they rely upon may see their food source disappear. The increasing ocean acidity due to rising levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide may cause the shells of these creatures to dissolve. During the film, it's, it's remarkable just to watch people quite often open-mouthed, gazing around um, in wonder at um, plankton that are, are now larger than they are. Um, plankton are normally tiny. That, um, a copepod may be smaller than a grain of rice. Um, a, a baby jellyfish or, or a jellyfish may be smaller than a pinhead. And the, the, the algae, the phytoplankton, are smaller than the diameter of, of a human hair. Here we have them three metres in length. Vast, massive. It takes you down to their scale. And we have them in glorious technicolour. I was very nervous about how it would be received, but on the first showing, at the, um, on, when the exhibition opened on the Tuesday morning to the public, we had a round of applause after the first, uh, first film, and, and after that I thought, oh yes, it'll be a success. To the Earth's climate, the plankton from millions of years in the past to the present day affects every aspect of our lives. From creatures that live on the seabed to the seagulls in the sky and the fish that we eat, the sea will be a barren wilderness without the remarkable ocean drifters we call the plankton.